All right, so one of the best readathons of the year is coming right up. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Justin here, and in this video, I just want to do a quick TBR of what I want to read during the upcoming readathon, Springathon. It's a really cool reading event uh, based all around nature reading, which you know, if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know that's like totally up my alley. So, um, actually, in that case, why don't we? switch over there so we can actually see some of my like field guides and nature more nature books i guess and here we are this is like kind of my more i guess outdoorsy section you know i got a bunch of like kind of books on birds and different animals and plants and all that stuff I've got some outdoor living things i don't really know what you call it gardening books some cookbooks over there all different kinds of field guides more field guides and then some kind of specifically naturey stuff and yeah anyways like i said i gotta do a library tour at some point here but anyways back to springathon so all right so like i said this was is a nature themed readathon is created by heidi over at my reading life emma at a couple books natalie at curious reader and doris at all the books they've been doing it i think since 2020 or 2021 if i remember correctly um, but it's all about, you know, nature and the life sciences, things like that. It can be nonfiction or fiction. Obviously, I'm going to be doing a lot of nonfiction and whatnot. And they put out a bunch of prompts, kind of vague prompts for, uh, I guess, people to kind of think about different things. Um, it's, you can, like, loosely associate it or you can just, like, ignore them, whatever. Um, I'm going to try to fit a book for each of the prompts. Um, there's also going to be Instagram stuff going on as well. So I should revive my Instagram, my bookstagram account that's been <laughs> dormant. Kind of like my uh, channel was for about like six months there, or maybe longer than that. Um, but anyways, let's just uh, go ahead and get started. It's created, it's not created, it's going on from May 3rd to May 19th. So it's two weeks plus an extra weekend. So that's, you know, that's always nice there. Um, there's going to be a group read, and this is The Sakura Obsession by Naoko Abe. Um, this is all about uh, Collingwood uh, Ingram, I believe his name was, who was a British, I, I think he was a British uh, botanist or gardener or something like that, and he helped kind of reestablish the cherry blossom tree um, when it was in severe decline over in Japan. Um, he brought some cultivars back to England, I believe, um, you know, raised them and then sent them kind of like all over the UK and the rest of the world and stuff like that to kind of help keep it going and make new varieties and things like that. So I think that'll be actually a pretty cool read. I think that'll fit one of the prompts uh, pretty good here. Um, so the four prompts are winter, spring, summer, and autumn this year. So I have one book each. And yeah, let's just uh, go ahead and get started. Let me know if you want a video for each of the prompts. Um, I have a ton of nature books, nature ideas. I've read a lot of nature books, things like that. Let me know if you want, you know, like videos on like a specific season to kind of just get your mind flowing on like different ideas for kind of sciencey, nature, outdoorsy, biological, flora and fauna books. Anyways, let's just go ahead and get started. We'll start with winter. Now, I was going to read um, Barry Lopez's Arctic Dreams here, Imagination and Desire in a Northern Landscape, because I have to read him at some point. I have to. There's no, there's no like if, ands, or buts about it. Um, it needs to happen, and I haven't yet. And I did pick this one up, I think, for like a dollar at a thrift store or something, or a used bookstore. And um, it's, I think, it's widely considered like one of his like top two in the top two of his like best works and stuff. But it's only a two week readathon. And I feel like if I read this one, which is like. I guess it's not as long as like it looks. It's only like the 400s, but it looks really big. I just feel like this is gonna like take up like, I don't know, close to a week maybe, especially since it's kind of more like a memoir travelogue kind of thing. Uh, but it's got really great descriptions of everything kind of up there in the Arctic. So this, I don't know, I still might, I still, maybe I'll flip a coin or something, we'll see. Um, but the other one for winter, I kind of went with like an icy theme here for winter. We have Lost Antarctica by James McClintock. Um, which I think I read the first chapter or two a long, long time ago. Not, not in a galaxy far away, but a long time ago. Um, and I never, I don't know, I, I want to say I did. Um, and I just got sidetracked and just forgot about it or something. Definitely wasn't like a DNF kind of book. It was just, yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. So I kind of want to rectify it. And this is all about, um, it's funny, He's I think he's a professor from Alabama, but he's like one of the world's like leading Arctic scientists and stuff. Um, and it's all uh, about kind of his 
uh, maybe adventures isn't the right word, but his kind of experience is at McMurdo's uh, station, which is a research station on uh, up in the, um, you know, the northern Arctic ice shelf and stuff. So yeah, I think it'll be cool. Um, oh, I lied. Why did I say northern Arctic ice shelf? It's last, lost Antarctica and it's McMurdo station. Don't, forget I said that. <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking going north for some reason. Uh, anyways, like I said, it's all about kind of just like how, what it's like to actually do things down there because I'm sure you know being like 50 below zero much of the year being in darkness much of the year uh, it's just a totally different experience it's not like you can just go up and take a hot shower whenever you want to because there's like hot water is actually kind of like a big luxury in places like that um, just because like the energy requirements and things uh, so yeah like I said it might be kind of interesting learning all about kind of that kind of harsh extreme uh, kind of environment to you know be a scientist and whatnot so going on to spring, I'm going with uh, Jane Goodall here. We got Seeds of Hope with Gail Hudson, forward by Michael Pollan there, uh, who wrote Botany of Desire, which is pretty famous. Uh, Wisdom and Wonder from the World of Plants. Now hope kind of sounds springful. Planting seed, which I will get to hopefully sometime if the weather ever, ever dries up. I still got like a month ago. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, that's definitely sowing seeds is a spring kind of thing to do so that's kind of why I went with this one plus Jane Goodall is just an awesome human being a really good scientist a really good humanitarian you should read and learn and watch things about her and stuff um, I've only read her book of hope um, which is only kind of like half hers it's kind of a weird kind of book um, and I have what one two three over there uh, of hers so yeah I need to get to one of them and I felt this was just like the perfect kind of spring book there I don't have a good setup over here. I don't know where I'm supposed to put my books. Usually I have like an empty space on my shelves and I wasn't smart enough to plan that far ahead. Uh, next up we got Summer. I'm going with this one here. Silent Sparks, The Wondrous World of Fireflies by Sarah Lewis. Now Fireflies to me uh, just you know, scream of summer. Uh, we don't have tons of them up here, but uh, you know, every now and then when you catch them at the right time, and you can just see like fireflies flying around and everything. Um, especially like when I do like camp bonfires and campfires uh, at my fire pit out in the backyard and stuff with friends and family and all that. Mostly friends, <laughs> but um, you know, I, I, it's just a really good time, and yeah, it just reminds me of summer. This one's really cool. It's kind of like I have like a history of the life cycle and uh, taxonomy of fireflies i don't know why it was i was trying to think of glowing beetles for some reason um there's lots of good diagrams and photographs let's see if i can find a couple in here uh we've got different uh species uh, uh highlights things like that so i really enjoy books like this well, i guess there wasn't as many pictures as i was expecting probably just like not flipping to them for some reason um but fireflies are really cool if i can find the i have a little clip of me catching a firefly and in my hand um, somewhere. Hopefully I can find that. Maybe I'll put it up right there. And then lastly, we got fall or autumn. And I was, I was kind of a little bit of difficulty figuring out what to actually read for this one. I felt the other ones fit really, really good. But then I got to think it kind of falls, like when everything's falling, you know, falling back, the leaves are falling, dying off, things like that. I went with uh, Atul Gawande's Being Mortal, Medicine and What Matters in the End. It's not like super nature-y per se, but it's all biology, the life sciences, medicine. Um, so it's like kind of an applied nature science sort of <laughs> in a way. Um, but I have this vague idea of starting to actually annotate and take notes of books more. And I have a vague idea for a series where I do that like once a month with a certain book and stuff. I feel like this one would probably be a good candidate. I know it's been out for like 10 years or something now, but um, I think it made pretty good waves when it did. And it's all about how long, like Western medicine now is all just focused on living longer, not necessarily the quality of the life that is being lived longer. Um, and it's all about, I guess, I, I assume doing the quality over quantity thing uh, for terminally ill people and the elderly that are kind of, you know, in senescence and stuff. So like I said, sounds like a really good read. I think it fits autumn pretty good, maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, there you have it. Those are my four, I guess, 
major contenders, I'll say, for my TBR4 Springathon. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you will be participating in Springathon. Um, I'm really excited. This is definitely one of the reading events that I enjoy the most. I know all my all the people that fall, watch watching this that are also in Historathon and stuff are going to come at me with pitchforks and stuff. Um, but I do love nature books. Uh, I just think it's a totally uh, underrated genre of books that people should be reading. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to participate and I hope you guys do as well. I feel like I'm squinting because like now that I'm on this side, there's like different, I couldn't get the lighting quite right. I had to get like a different like, like spotlight for this like little alcove that I'm in. Can't see it, but it's like, there's a little wall on like both sides of me. So uh, the lights just like don't really work <laughs> well and I feel like I'm squinting. But anyways, so like I was saying, it's just a really cool readathon and I hope you guys all join as well. Nature, like I said, I, I'm pleased whenever people read nonfiction, but nature has kind of got like a soft place in my heart. But anyways, whatever you end up reading, whether it's a nature book or not, always remember, read victoriously.